Evening everybody, it's me, Comic Crack. Um, back today with a pre-recorded video. I was doing a little bit of research today on just kind of web cameras. Um, just getting kind of frustrated with some of the limitations that were with this particular web camera. And what I discovered was that this web camera actually has a program that you can uh, use on your computer. The Logitech is the type of camera and uh, the, this program is Logi or Logi. Um, and what it does, it allows you to kind of, it actually allows you to run two cameras at a time, which is interesting. You can put two cameras in and kind of change camera angle one, pardon me, camera angle one and camera angle two. For each of those cameras, you can do a bunch of stuff. So what I've done on this one is I've turned the autofocus, I've set the autofocus so basically it's not going to hunt around for focus. So for example if I put that up in the front there it won't hunt for it until I click on that and somewhere in there I guess. So it can kind of, so let's throw it way out of focus. So I'm way out of focus and with a click of a button I can slide right back into focus. So that's, that to me, that's the key right there. Because the one thing that was the most frustrating about this camera was um, just that constant hunting. Especially when I was pointing down, looking at Eclipse Comics. It's nice to have that focus set so I can bring things in and out of frame. Um, it also does a little bit of, you can adjust the image itself. So you can set um, all sorts of things for it. Uh, you can turn on the auto white balance, turn it off. You can turn on anti-flicker, turn that off. There's a chroma key function. There's some kind of presets, which is what you're looking at here. Um, so it's uh, it's not as blue as normally. Speaking of blue, representing. Um, so I figured I'd just shoot a, a sort of a test video, and maybe we'll do a little bit of talking, um, and I'll upload it and see kind of how this looks. I've kind of pushed everything forward to throw that background out of focus a little bit more just to add something to it as I'm experimenting. Uh, unfortunately all my light is coming from here. Um, so that's it. So I mean let me know how it sounds. I, I'm playing with the volume here too. Um, I did a couple of tests and I, I believe this volume sounds good. Sorry let me just readjust my microphone here there we go sorry everybody for the noise as I move around that mic there you go hopefully that wasn't too disturbing the one thing that keeps popping up for some reason it says I might not have enough resources um, I did kind of do a real good hunt through my computer and I deleted a bunch of stuff I had a bunch of movies on here uh, deleted a bunch of those just to make some more room and I shut down things that were running in the background but for some reason that keeps popping up so we'll see what happens with this one um, I filmed a video just recently I did a, a live kind of session and for the 13 people that saw it um, or maybe started watching the live stream and then had to run and are hunting back for it I, I took it offline um, I don't think I'm gonna share it it's not that I was talking about anything bad I wasn't talking smack about people or anything um, I just didn't feel like sharing it so it did disappear and just kind of after I finished filming it kind of this I had second thoughts about it um, and I just pulled it off the my channel um, so nothing again you're not missing anything there's nothing dramatic that happened by any stretch I just didn't feel comfortable keeping that up there the stuff that I was kind of in the mood to share at that moment um, I, I don't knew, really know if I want to share it I guess I could have just not said anything and you never would have known that it was there but it's too late that came out um, but one thing I there was a couple of things that I did want to talk about um, just briefly and one of them being uh, the the recent purchase of this Lone Sloan Salambo book from Static Press Titan Comics um, beautiful beautiful book it's it's 
one of the things that I was talking about in that video is just storytelling and how how we read uh, specifically comics but it could be novels it could be whatever the idea of storytelling through the comics medium and how what kind of subtext I was interested in what kind of subtext people read into things especially when it comes to superheroes just kind of what what subtext are you what underlying message are you reading with your superhero stories are you really letting the story tell itself or how much of what you want out of a story are you bringing to it uh, because I find that a lot of the things that I want with these stories are maybe a little more towards the the, the politics kind of end um, and not even what's considered right and wrong but almost kind of the ability to create an argument to sort of lead you down a certain path. I know that there's a lot of people that don't want politics in their comics. For me, I think it's inescapable with a lot of stories. There is, there's stuff that's going to come back to a belief system of some kind, I feel. Um, and again, everything stated on this channel is my opinion. Uh, I don't, I don't pretend to talk for anybody else but myself. And the, the one thing that I did touch on was that because I'm not religious and I, I don't believe in God um, of any kind, and I think all religions are, are dangerous and, and a little bit crazy, um, I do end up reading politics. So I don't know if politics are quite like a, a religion, but there is still kind of morals, and then there is still kind of a, a train of thought in there that's leading you down a path. And the one thing I, I again, I I'm, I'm, don't feel like I'm breaking down any doors here with this kind of thinking. It just took me by surprise that as I started to flip through this book, um, I flipped through it and kind of checked out some images and stuff. And uh, then I just sat down and instantly started reading it and was immediately sucked into this world and it just kind of hit me. It happens with a lot of stuff for sure. But um, there's something about Drie's artwork that is really just unlike anything else uh, I think I've ever seen. Um, and that uh, there's always the... I was watching Damien and Travis talking about comics and talking about independent comics. And... I don't remember if they were talking about an Azzarello piece, but I was reminded many years ago, Travis and I, I think we were reading, was it Spaced by Azzarello? And one of the things that hit me about that series, that miniseries, was his use of language and how he was creating a slang and how difficult that is to do. It's really difficult to create some kind of futuristic almost sci-fi-ish story and create some slang that doesn't sound hokey that doesn't sound sort of of this time not kind of a future slang um that said i haven't revisited that book so i don't know how it would sit now after these years have passed but i do remember that jumping out at me that that was something that i really really enjoyed about that miniseries uh, just the use of language, and it did sound natural, the slang that they were using. With Drier's stuff, it's such a... There's still something to grab onto with the visuals, where you can kind of ground yourself. But then it's taken to another dimension that... Man, does it ever... Does it ever uh, create its own universe and its own world? Um... It just, it's impressed how much I, I got sucked into this world right away, like instantaneously. Um, and it really just transports you somewhere that, uh, where this stuff is just plausible and kind of wishing that I could explore this world in person. Um, he's got a couple of techniques going on here. I'm, I believe there's some spray paint involved and there's some airbrushing that happens later on. 
along with his usual kind of technique. I mean, look at this. So you're entering, you're about to enter uh, the, 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 they're heading towards another planet and these kind of giant statues are floating in space as kind of uh, uh, an entryway or a gateway. It's incredible, incredible stuff. Um, we'll see how that reads. I, I haven't had a chance. I, I started into it and I got a, a nice kind of quarter of the way into it, but I haven't had a chance to sit and finish it. It is a thicker volume compared to the other volumes. It's probably two times. Let's have a look. Yeah, so it's kind of two times um, what these previous volumes were. Uh, I have four volumes now. And it looks like I'm missing one. Uh, and then there's going to be... It says coming soon. So this particular one was published uh, December 2018. So when it says coming soon, three more volumes, including Delirious 2, uh, The Night, and Vuzz. So no dates on any of that stuff, but um, I I'm loving these hardcore volumes, uh, hardcore, <laughs> hardcover volumes that uh, Titan and Static Press are putting out of his work. Really, really fascinating stuff. So if you don't have that one, I would highly suggest picking it up. Um, speaking of stories and how they can pull you into their world... The other thing that I picked up recently was uh, Superman uh, for all seasons, not of all seasons, Superman for all seasons. And um, I had one or two of these already. Uh, love the back covers on these, by the way. I mean, everything about this. It's another one of those examples that when a character is done right, it, the way that it can resonate is incredible never really been a big superman fan um all-star superman is is a series that i love and this series i absolutely adore um each volume is voiced by another character so none of the books have kind of clark Cantor superman uh internal dialogue he talks a little bit throughout the series but it just talks about Clark Kent becoming Superman and leaving Smallville and going to Metropolis and kind of battling Lex Luthor for the first time. Um, but it just deals with... There seems to be... Maybe I've mentioned this in a video before. I don't know if I mentioned it in the one that I deleted or not. But um, there seems to be many moments lately where I'm, I'm being met with some stories that the children are, are kind of leaving uh, to go on about their business and to kind of get into their world. Where Me and my daughter are revisiting uh, Studio Ghibli stuff. We just watched uh, Nausicaa last night, actually. I just picked it up. Um, I can't believe I've never seen it before. Uh, an incredible, incredible movie. I really, really loved it. Um, not necessarily that one, even though the main character is someone's daughter going off there seems to be a bit of this happening in my storytelling these days uh, and this one really hit me as well and one of the moments that hit me big time uh, first of all the coloring is incredible I'm gonna have to remember that the focus is kind of back here uh, the coloring is incredible and we get this that Clark kind of takes some time off and goes back to Smallville and he approaches his dad who's working in a field and before he can even tell him that he's there um, his dad says can you stay for supper and he says how did you know it was me mud on city shoes has its own sound and I'd know your footsteps anywhere Clark uh, and then we open to this page and it kind of gives me chills even just looking at this again uh, just a beautiful shot of them embracing in a field uh, it's 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 amazing. It literally brought me to tears when I was reading it. I was really into this. Um, the way I've been reading some of this stuff lately, instead of sitting and diving right into it into one reading, I read one issue, put it down, went about doing some stuff, continued with the day. Later on that day, I read the second issue, 
later on the next day I read the third issue I'm kind of spacing them out a little bit uh, which I, I'm enjoying for some of these stories giving me a chance to almost to get a little bit of a taste of those weekly comics where you do have this time to absorb the issue that you've read uh, trying to absorb some of this stuff I'm really in a, a reading frenzy lately um, I'm reading a lot of stuff uh, and, a, and a bunch of different things too it's it's all working for me a lot, um, and I, I'm not quite sure what's changed. I think there's just a lot of things that I've accumulated, and as I'm going kind of back into digging into Eclipse, I'm really just digging into these stories and realizing that I've got a lot of miniseries now that are complete. I'm kind of past the part of, okay, I need two more issues or I need one more issue. I've got a lot of stuff where I've got the whole miniseries, so there's no more excuse not to read them. Not that I need one, because I'm finding it incredibly exciting digging into these now and, and reading a complete story. Um, so that one is is just beautiful. If you haven't read it, uh, if you don't have it, this is, this is one I'll be double dipping on. If I ever, I believe it came out in a hardcover volume as well too. Uh, if I ever do stumble across it or maybe I'll order it, I will absolutely be picking this up in a hardcover. Uh, I love having the single issues, but a hardcover needs to, to be on my shelf. Um, and then the last things that I was talking about, I don't know if I kind of want to make this, well, maybe we'll just go for it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like that's going to be its own thing. Uh, so maybe I'm going to cut this video here. So... I don't know if, if you want to contribute in a video or if you want to contribute in the comments, whatever. I, I'm, I am just curious, though, of what you all bring to the stories that you're reading, the comics that you're reading. Uh, of course, we can run the gamut from independent to superhero to so-called art comics and things and abstract comics that maybe don't necessarily have a linear story, but I feel even through images and stuff, you're still... You're still giving off some sort of, uh, um, not ideology, but there is something that you're saying, even with those, even when it's satire, even when it's, there's still something that you're commenting on. And I'm just curious what you bring to your comic reading. Um, for the most part, I do feel like I let the book speak for itself, but I do know that there's a part of me that is just, this is the way that I think about things. Um, so I do bring some of that to my reading, for sure. Um, I don't feel like I try to shoehorn it into the books that I'm reading. I think I'm just also naturally attracted to stuff that's going to have that type of thought. Um, listening to CBC the other day, uh, there was an interview. I can't remember exactly what he was talking about. I think he was talking about algorithms not only for Facebook and YouTube but just in general when it comes to um, the internet and the reality that you create versus what is given to you uh, as far as hey if you like this video maybe you'll like this video and he gave a couple of extreme examples where he was looking for I don't remember I think it was for training for a marathon and one of the recommended videos was uh, street fighting and he found that really bizarre that those would link up and what it would mean to the algorithm for himself and other people if he clicked on that street fighting video would that mean that anytime he or somebody else looks for marathons that's automatically going to link up those two subjects um, and just about how you kind of create your own identity through things that you uh, watch and participate in and I feel that stretches to a lot of things. Um, again, maybe some of this is completely obvious, uh, but it just it interested me. It just got my imagination going and just got my thoughts going down this path of what we choose to, to bring into our lives and the stories that we choose. Are we really choosing them? Or is it kind of just predetermined that, no, this is the kind of thing you're going to be attracted to so you're just naturally going to be buying those things and reading those stories. Um, 
and again, there's exceptions to every rule. For sure there is, uh, because I do find myself to be an adventurous reader, movie watcher, music listener. I do kind of run the gamut, and I know that there's many of us out there that do. Um, I just thought there was a little bit of food for thought in there, and I'm curious if this sparks any sort of inner dialogue with you that you want to share. Please be uh, feel free to share it in the comments or share it in a video. Um, and at that, it still looks like it's held the focus, and the image looks really good on my end. I'm curious to see how it translates when I upload it to the YouTubes. So um, thanks very much for tuning in, everybody. I'm going to stop this now, and I'll talk to you soon.